All right, so uh, today we're going to be working on section 2.1a. Uh, we're going to do, we don't start with chapter one. That's really, really, well, I mean, this is kind of easy too, right? Imagine how easy that stuff is that we skip it. Um, so section 2.1a, order of operations and expressions. The expressions part is like terms, and we combine some like terms together, okay? So order of operations and like terms. Now, the main reason why so many people do not know how to do order of operations is because they were taught to do things in a specific order, but they were never told that some of them can be switched, okay? So obviously you guys know uh, this acronym, okay? Uh, most people do know this acronym here. And what that basically means is parentheses, right? Parentheses get done first. So you're going to find any parentheses. You're going to do whatever is inside those parentheses first. Then you move on. Uh, after that, we move on to exponents, right? So any exponents that you see, so maybe there's a squared po a power of 2, a power of 3. You're going to do that next, okay? And then here's where things mess up. Because the M stands for multiplication. The D stands for division. And a lot of people, let me write this down here, multiplication, division. And a lot of people do the multiplication and division in that order. They do, they say multiply first. You got to multiply first. It's the first letter. Then D happens after. So you got to do division second. Um, this is actually supposed to be an or in between here. You multiply or divide depending on what is coming up from left to right. Okay, so I'm going to put right here based on left to right arithmetic. So in other words, as you guys are, are looking at the problem and you're reading it, from left to right, if division pops up first, then you gotta divide first. If multiplication pops up first, then you multiply first, okay? So there's an or there, and the same happens with addition or subtraction, okay? There is an or here as well. Okay, so this is going to be addition or subtraction. I want to see if this still works. Yeah, it does. So let's see. Sometimes I'll cheat. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry, I guess, but um, saves me a little bit of time. But it uh, works on the same thing. It's an or. Okay, you either add or subtract based on left to right arithmetic. So um, if you're going to be uh, adding numbers and the minus comes out first, then go ahead and subtract first. And then if a plus happens after that, then you add after that. Okay, or if addition popped up first, then add first. Well, only when it's addition and subtraction, right? If there's multiplication and addition, then you got to multiply first, then you add next. Okay. We're going to do a couple of little examples. I think we have three, six, nine. We have ten examples to do, but they should be fast. Don't worry. Okay? Uh, and by the way, I do normally do a lot of examples, but that's because I do a lot of your homework. So if there was 18 problems, maybe I do nine examples because I did half of your homework for you. Uh, like I said, most of the time students are like, if you're doing my homework for me, keep going. Right? The less I have to worry about, the better. So... Usually that's what I try to do. I try to do enough examples to kind of do about 40% of your homework or something. So here we go. But this is what we're going to basically be following, the order of operations, okay, parentheses, exponents, multiplication or division, and then addition or subtraction. So here are some examples uh, that you guys are going to see in your homework. Uh, not all of them come from your homework, but most of them do. So I tell you guys to write them down. Um, let me put right here, simplify. And we'll start off with this one right here. Uh, 4 plus 1. Now, I don't like writing times like that, but sometimes they like to put those out there, right? Those x's, right? That's a times 4. So according to order of operation, you should be working on your what first? 
parentheses, right? Inside the parentheses, there's a sum, 4 plus 1, that's going to be 5. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 5 right there. I'll keep the parentheses there. It doesn't hurt. Um, but there's nothing more I can do with the parentheses. So now I move out, and I see there's multiplication, 5 times 4. That gives me 20. So there's my answer, okay? Yes, this is, I think, the homework problem for me. Okay, like I said, it should be pretty easy. Now, I am expecting you guys to do this without a calculator. There is a part that says use a calculator or your phone. I'm going to tell you guys uh, when we're done, if we do have enough time, which I hope we should, but we did take up about 10 minutes for that video. I'm going to tell you, bring out your computer and go to desmos.com and have Desmos do those problems for you. Because you're going to see Desmos is pretty awesome. You can just type it out the way you see it, and they can do it right away. So it's pretty nice. So there's one, right? Pretty simple. There should be no fear for doing that. Let's try another one. Another one that's uh, on your homework. 2 plus 10 over 6 minus 4 plus 6. So in this case, I don't have any parentheses. I don't have any exponents. So P and E, they, they don't matter. There is no multiplication, but I do see a division. 10 divided by 6 minus 4. So first I got to simplify the denominator, the 6 minus 4, right? And that's going to give me a 2. So 2 plus 10 over 2 plus 6. Okay, whenever you're doing a division problem and you see a fraction, you got to work the top and then the bottom. Okay, work them out first. Now, I still got to do division because the other stuff's adding, and adding goes at the very end, right? Addition, subtraction at the very end. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. And I mean, you don't have to do this next part step by step if you don't want to. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 plus 6, that's 13. Okay? We're not to the internet problem yet. We'll, we'll get there soon. Okay, so just follow the the order of operation, okay? And uh, you should be good. And again, calculators can help you and stuff, but I do want you guys to try your best to do these by hand. Unfortunately, a, a lost art is a lot of people aren't really good at their multiplication tables. I remember at, when I was a kid, man, the very first thing we did, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, the teacher used to give us 100 multiplication uh, problems. They were like, this times one, this times two, this times three, like all from one to ten, and we had to fill them out. We had less than a minute to do it, right? Like they used to just drill and kill. That's what it was called, drill and kill. Now we can't say drill and kill because it's not PT, right? But just practice, practice, practice until like you just don't forget it, right? I don't know if they do that that anymore, but it's it's useful. Now, this is not a problem from your homework, but there is a problem just like this on your homework. So, in other words, there's one that looks almost identical. I just changed some stuff around, right? But since there's only one of them, I don't want to do the only one that's there. So, I want you guys to do the only one that's there. I'll do one that's similar. So, if you guys recall, in Algebra 1, or I guess we call it Math 1, they, they made you plug numbers in, right? So, right here, we're going to plug some numbers in. This is a times b, okay? So this is four times a negative three. If you want to put it in a parenthesis, feel free. If you don't want to, you can just write it out immediately. Uh, four times negative three is what? Four times, not four plus. Negative 12, yeah, negative 12. But four plus negative three is one, that is correct. But uh, four times here, uh, negative 12 to, uh, squared, 144, yeah, it's 144. The reason why I chose these numbers is because you guys should be really good at squaring numbers up to 12. Okay, actually, I always tell my students up to 16. So, I mean, most of you guys know 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, right? 3 squared is 9, etc. Uh, you guys can get up to 10, 10 squared is 100, then I say 11 squared, and then people start to drop off, right? 11 squared is how much? 121. What's, what's the 12 squared? We said 144. What's 13 squared? 169. What's 14 squared? Anybody know 14 squared? It's almost like 13 squared. 13 squared is 169. 14 squared is 196. Anybody know 15 squared? 
Sorry? 225 and 16 squared. Any gamers, PC people, you should know this. 16 squared is 256. Okay? And I usually tell people that's kind of where you stop. I don't know 17 squared personally. I, I stopped at 16. Because really, you don't ever see 17 squared. So uh, if you can know all your squares up to 16, that'd be great. After that, there's tricks to 20s, 30s, 40s, 60s, and all those. Um, but but 16, you can kind of stop there. I would say practice those, make sure you know. Are we okay with these first three? Pretty easy, right? No big deal. Now, they're going to have you do the following, and, I, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to do this on Desmond, but there's going to be a section in your homework that's going to look like this. So I'm going to put example number two. It's going to say use a scientific calculator or your cell phone to do these. Now I'm going to actually just write use Desmos to evaluate. And in case you don't know, That's the website, okay? But I'll do these just so you can see, all right? And I'll write them out um, for us here. So you're gonna use Desmos to evaluate. Uh, and these will be pretty quick. A is gonna be negative three minus two minus eight times six, okay? Part B is going to be, so notice I'm not even leaving any space because I'm going to have the computer do it for me. 3 squared times 3 minus a negative 2. And then part C, again, I'm not leaving any space because I'm not going to do any work. I'm just going to punch it in and it's going to give me an answer and I'm going to write it down. I'm going to move on. Okay. And then after this one, I'll show you guys one of those internet problems that people are like, no, it's zero. It's like, if you got anything other than 15, you're stupid. And I'm, I'm thinking, it's not even 15. Like, that's not even the right order of operation, right? And they're like, I used the order of operation, then it came out to 12. I'm like, that's wrong. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people think they know what they're doing, but they, they usually mess up on that or problem that I mentioned, right? Like, they do multiplication before division no matter what. And it's like, that's no, not right. It's not right. So... Right now I'm going to go to Desmos and we're going to do all three of these, okay? So let me go to Desmos here. Um, all right. So Desmos.com. By the way, as, as we're here, just to show you guys something. When you go to Desmos.com, if they haven't changed the website, which I don't think they have, but let's see, all the way down to the bottom. Yep, all the way down to the bottom. Notice where it says products. It says graphing calculator, scientific calculator, four function calculator, test practice, matrix calculator, a geometry tool, and even a 3D calculator. There's tons of different calculators. So if you just want a, a basic scientific, just click on scientific. Now we're going to go to the graphing one because I want you guys to get used to that one. But if you just click on scientific, right now they'll show you what it looks like. Just like that. Okay? But I don't want to do that one. Let me go back. I want the graphing one. Usually you don't have to go all the way to the bottom to the graphing one. It's going to be right here at the very top. And it's going to look like that. This is the one where you can just type it in. So check it out. The first problem that I gave you guys was negative 3. So I'm going to type negative 3 minus 2 minus 8 and then times 6. So I, I press the asterisk for times, right? And there you go. It gave me the answer. Negative 53. Okay? So I'm done. I'm just going to write the answer negative 53. Now notice if you're thinking, well, wait a minute. Negative 3 minus 2, that's negative 5. And negative 5 times, uh, sorry, minus 8, that's negative 13. Negative 13 times 6 is not negative 53. That's because that's the wrong way to do it. Right? According to that, the order of operations, you got to multiply first. 8 times 6, that's 48. Now it's negative 3 minus 2 minus 48. That's negative 53. Okay? So your answer is negative 53. Let me go back to the um, notes here. Negative 53. And I'm done. Okay? Let's do the next one. Let me go back.
back here. So I'm just going to press down one time to go under. And I'm just going to type it in with the parentheses the way I did it. Okay, so um, in case you guys don't know, do you guys know how to bring a power up? Do you guys know what key combination to press? It's the caret symbol, okay? Shift 2. Or you can use uh, the keyboard down here if you want and put square if you want, okay? But if you do shift 2, the little caret symbol, that allows it to go up to a power. Okay, anyway, um, let's go back. So 3 squared, then parentheses. So notice I'm not putting times or anything. I'm just writing parentheses. Minus a negative 2. And that's basically what I wrote down. It says your answer is 45. So I'm done. 45. Let me go write that down in my notes. 45. And the last one, 3 squared plus 2 to the third minus 4 to the third. So um, we'll go back to Desmos. So I said 2 squared. Actually, I'm sorry. It's not shift 2. It's shift 6. That's the carrot symbol, a little up arrow. So it was, oh, I'm sorry, 3 squared. 3 squared. 3 squared uh, plus 2 cubed. So 2 to the third uh, minus 4 to the third is negative 47 okay and I'm done that's it negative 47 so you just got to type it out the way you see it this program understands like order of operations and what parentheses mean and all that stuff so uh, so negative 47 let me put that in to our notes and we'll be done with that section so negative 47 all right now there's one problem I want to kind of have you guys work on. I'm going to pause the video, but try doing this one. This is one of those internet problems that people start calling each other names. You're dumb, you're stupid, you don't know what you're doing, and everybody's wrong, and, but they're still like, they're dying on their mountain that they did it right. So example number three, I'm not going to ask you to tell me the answer, but if anybody wants to uh, shout it out in a bit, feel free to do it. Okay. so. This is an example of the one that goes on the internet, like on TikTok, and people are like, just can't. Okay? Take your time. Let me pause the video. And then make sure I have this in red. Does anybody want to volunteer an answer? 18. Anybody agree with 18? Yeah? Anybody else? Okay, so I'm starting to feel a little confident. So sit, you got to do the parentheses first, right? So you add 6 plus 1 is 7. Right? And then you gotta multiply before you add. So 2 times 7 is 14. And 4 plus 14 is 18. What is the most common wrong answer here? What do you guys think? Oh, I can. 1? Oh, 20. How'd you get 20? Let me see. I mean, that would be incorrect. But how, how would you get 20? What would you do? Oh, okay, okay, okay. But that, yeah, yeah. If you multiply it out first before you add it, you could get that wrong. Anybody, give me another one that's off. Forty-two, and what would you do? Because I think that's the, probably the most common one. A lot of people, remember how I told you, they just they figure, I'm going to add 4 plus 2. It's right there. 4 plus 2 is 6. And then inside of 7, 6 times 7 is 42. Right? That's probably the most common mistake that people will make. They'll add it before they do the multiplication inside. So, uh, But yeah, 18 should be the right answer. Okay? Um, I told you guys about photo math. Um, use it to check your work. Right? Remember, use it. Don't abuse it. Okay? Check your work. People always ask me, do you check all our homework? I don't check all your homework. I check that you did it. I'm checking to see if the work seems right. But you guys have tools that you can check all your homework yourself. You should never be turning in wrong work. Okay, your phone can check everything for you now, right? So that's why I'm not like a big grading every single problem all the time because you guys really should be turning in 100% work every single time. You have the means. I used to have to buy a book for four 
I think it was close to 200 bucks, the calculus book I used to use. A big old book of solutions, because that's the only way I could check if I was right. Now my phone will do that for free. Okay? So check your work. Don't just say like, oh, I think I'm right, whatever. Right? Make sure you're right. All right? So last thing we're going to do. Again, these are coming in from your homework assignment stuff. So it's not like I'm wasting your time. And man, I can do all this homework. Oops, I'm sorry. I can do all this stuff on my homework. We are doing your homework right now. So um, we're going to simplify the like terms. Remember, like terms are terms that have the same letter with the same power, but the numbers in the front don't have to match. So like x and x, those are like terms. But x and x squared, those are not like terms. They may have the same letter, but they don't get put together. It's like saying, I'm going to join a tomato and an orange right now. You don't do that. You join tomatoes, you join oranges together, you can group them up, they'll be the right group. But, um, yeah, so like terms are terms that have the same letter and the same power. Okay? They don't necessarily have to have the same coefficient. The number in the front doesn't have to be the same. The same letter, same power. All right? So these are three from your homework. Oops. Sorry, I like to use black as my problems red to do the work sometimes green and blue to highlight things so you'll kind of notice that so here's the first one n minus 6 plus 3n plus 7 okay numbers are considered like terms so negative 6 and a positive 7 those are like terms n and 3n are like terms right they have the same power so so it's n to the first n to the 3n to the first so n plus 3n gives me what 4n, yeah, because remember, there is a 1. There's a 1 right there. There's a little hidden 1. You don't see it, okay? But there is a 1, and so uh, 1n plus 3n is 4n, and then negative 6 plus 7, positive 1, right? And there's your answer. Again, this stuff is not meant to be, like, super challenging, and, you know, you're going to be crying in your room because, you know, I, I've never seen problems this difficult. It's not supposed to be like that, okay? You've seen this stuff. They're just trying to warm you up again. Okay? So, negative 5 times the quantity of negative 1 minus 3n. I'm supposed to do parentheses first. Can I join anything inside the parentheses? No, right? I have a negative 1 and then something with the letter. that They're not like terms. So, the only thing I can do is distribute. Right? So, I'm going to distribute um, this stuff over. So negative 5 times negative 1, that's a 5, right? Negative 5 times a negative 3m, positive 15m. Can I add 5 plus 15m? No, a lot of people still do it. I always get answers of 20m, okay? You cannot add those. One is just a number. One is a number with a variable, okay? So leave them alone, okay? Last one, and, and then from there I'll give you guys your homework assignment. I don't know how much time we have left. Uh, I'm going to let you guys try this one out on your own, then we'll come back. I think this one is a problem. Yes, it is a problem from your homework. So if it looks, this is actually like the longest problem in your homework assignment. So try it out. I'm going to pause it, and then we'll do it. All right, so let's do this problem here. Uh, you are going to have to do some distribution here and also here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do all the distribution first, and then uh, we'll, we'll move on with the problem. So negative 5 times 10n is negative 50n. Negative 5 times 2, negative 10. Plus, I'm going to put a parenthesis there because um, I am multiplying by negative, so I'm going to start getting negatives popping up. So 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, and negative 4 times negative 6n is positive 24n. Now, if I distribute a positive into that parenthesis, does it change any of the signs? No, right? Positives don't change anything. Negatives change stuff. So let me just rewrite this problem just to make it look cleaner, and then we'll move on. Okay? Now, I know negative 10 minus 4 is negative 14, so I'm going to kind of keep that in the back of my head. I'm going to put that at the end, minus 14. 
Negative 50n plus 24n is negative what? 26, right? Yeah. Um, tw negative 26. So negative 26n minus 14 is your answer, and that is it for today.